So, welcome to the eighth session, in which we shall first answer the question that we posed in the previous session. Namely, if we look at the system y of t is x of t plus phi, is the system shift invariant? And the answer indeed is yes, because if x of t minus t 0 is given to the system, the output is x of t minus t 0 plus 5 and that is of course equal to y of t minus t 0. So, this is also an example of a system which is shift invariant, but neither additive nor homogeneous. Now, all of these ideas are very well until we keep to theory as we are doing all this while, but we would like to relate them now to real life. And let us relate them to the examples that we saw earlier on in this course. For example, let us relate these ideas to the RC circuit or the resistive capacitive circuit that we had built earlier. So, indeed, let us recall that circuit. It was a resistance and a capacitance in series connected to a voltage source. You could denote the voltage source like this with the polarity as shown and the output was taken across the capacitor. So, the capacitor voltage was the output. The input was the voltage source itself, the voltage input here. And of course, we can ask whether this system is linear or not rather it obeys additivity and homogeneity or not. We know the equation of this system. Recall that V t, it is or V in t, if we want to call it that, was equal to R times C d V output d t plus V output t. Or in other words, x of t, if you call x t the input, is R C d y t d t plus y t. This was the describing equation of the system description. Now, we can ask whether this system is additive and homogeneous or not and the answer is simple. Let us write down two different equations for two different inputs x 1 t and x 2 t. You have x 1 t is r c d y 1 t d t plus y 1 t and x 2 t is r c d y 2 t d t plus y 2 t. In fact, now we shall bring in a little variant on the notion of additivity and homogeneity and we shall bring in one test for both of them called superposition. So, let us introduce the principle of superposition. We ask whether a linear combination of the inputs. So, alpha times x 1 t plus beta times x 2 t also results in the same linear combination of the outputs or not. So, take this equation and call it 1 and take this equation and call it 2. Multiply 1 by alpha and 2 by beta and add and we get alpha times x 1 t plus beta times x 2 t is equal to r c alpha times d y 1 t d t plus alpha times y 1 t plus r c beta times d y 2 t d t plus beta times y 2 t and after rearranging this, it is very easy to see that alpha x 1 t plus beta x 2 t results in R c times d d t of alpha y 1 t plus beta y 2 t plus alpha y 1 t plus beta y 2 t. And therefore, 
we conclude that alpha x 1 t plus beta x 2 t results in alpha y 1 t plus beta y 2 t and this holds for all possible x 1, x 2, alpha and beta. When this holds for all possible x 1, x 2, alpha and beta, we say the system obeys the principle of superposition. This is a very important concept, the principle of superposition. In fact, we should spend a minute in understanding the meaning of the word superposition. Literally, superposition means putting one on top of the other and that is exactly what you are doing. You are doing something slightly more. You are first scaling the two inputs and then putting one on top of the other and you are asking whether the outputs suffer the same fate. They each get scaled by the same constants and they get superposed as do the inputs. Do they suffer the same fate and does this happen for all possible inputs and all possible linear combinations with constants alpha and beta? If so, the principle of superposition has been obeyed. Now, we show that the principle of superposition subsumes both additivity and homogeneity. So, if the principle of superposition is obeyed, then the system is additive and the system is homogeneous. Let me first show the principle of additivity based on superposition. In particular, choosing alpha equal to 1 and beta equal to 1 gives the principle of additivity and choosing alpha as the scaling constant with beta equal to 0 gives homogeneity. So, superposition means additivity and homogeneity both together. We shall see more about these principles in the next discussion. But before we go to the next discussion, I would like to pose a question before you. What changes might the system suffer which would destroy this principle of superposition? The electrical system I mean. What are the little, say, you know, changes that that electrical system needs to suffer? What changes do I have to respect in that possible changes to make the system non superposable or where it disobeys the principle of superposition? But do we need to have some changes in the elements, the way the elements behave, for example? Well, we will come back to it in the next session. Thank you.